say, hey, Andrea. Hey. Hi. Um, I just want to introduce Andrea. Um, Andrea Hoagie is an artist and crafter based in Vancouver, BC. Andrea paints fun and quirky anthropomorphic animals as well as retro pop cultural icons, which she makes into magnets, prints, buttons, and stickers. In addition, Andrea has a line of adult and baby clothing items that feature her detailed scratch board illustrations and are printed by hand at her home-based silkscreen studio. All of her products are made either at home or at her studio in the Arts Factory in East Vancouver. Andrea sells her work in stores and at markets Canada-wide. Andrea also shows and sells her original oil paintings and scratch board illustrations in fine art galleries. Her work has been featured in many group shows in Vancouver and beyond, and she has had five solo shows. She attended the University of the Fraser Valley and received her Bachelor of Arts degree, majoring in psychology and minoring in visual arts. Her work has been featured in publications online and on television. Welcome to Andrea Hoagie. Thanks. <laughs> so would you describe your artwork for me? Yeah, um, so I, my work is mainly figurative, which means I draw a lot of animals and people and things that are derived from real life. Um, and the mediums I work with include oil paint, watercolor, and scratch boards. So it's a bit of a variety. Um, I, uh, I'm really drawn to like vintage books and toys. Um, so a lot of the work I create uh, incorporate sort of like retro clothing and objects. Um, and so I have, uh, I put my art into different places. So I have my art that I show in like galleries. Um, and I also have artwork that I show uh, at markets and stores. So I guess I'll speak to the markets and stores first. Um, the work I make for that, um, and as online as well, uh, includes like funny and quirky animals wearing clothing. Um, I like to draw them to look like people you might know. So people usually get a laugh out of the illustrations. Um, as for the gallery work, uh, I also incorporate animals and clothing, but there's more of a stronger emphasis on like vintage imagery. Um, and I, I have a lot of emphasis on, I use a lot of scratch board for these images. Um, and for those of you who are not uh, familiar, for people who aren't familiar with um, scratch board, it's basically a white clay coated surface um, that's coated with a layer of black India ink. And I'm using a blade to scratch out a way to show um, fine white lines. Mm -hmm. So scratch board is a reductive art making technique, which means cutting an image into a surface. It's yes. very much like printmaking. Yeah. Do you have a background in those techniques? I do, yeah. So, um, so when I went to university, I studied psychology, but I also have um, d did like a minor in visual arts, and so I did a lot of printmaking during that time. Um, and I, I really fell in love with uh, one style of printmaking called lino cut. Um, but I found that once I was finished with the university, it was kind of messy. It was hard to figure out a way to like do that at home or do that without a studio space, and I didn't, I wasn't aware of what Scratchboard was prior to that, but, um, but a friend of mine was doing it and I tried it out and I was like, oh, this is exactly like what I was doing, but with even more detail. Um, and it was something that was easy to pick up and just work on, on the go. Mm -hmm. um, what's funny now is that my husband has started screen printing in the past few years. And so I use my Scratchboard images to, um, for him to create screen prints. So I'm kind of, it's kind of come full circle where I'm back to printmaking again, or at least he is. Um, but that, those are the images that I print onto shirts that I sell at the market. I find that your work has, um, you know, it's got a real basis in drawing, like rooted not only in printmaking, but also illustration. But you also create work for galleries. How is this work different? And what is your creative process like in the creation of work for galleries? The work that I reserve for uh, the galleries has a lot more depth to it. Um, and it's, it's a little bit more to untangle. Um, and so basically, um, I guess I like to recreate scenes that you might think you'd find in like a storybook illustration. Um, it has that sort of nostalgic, uh, recognizable feeling to it, but then I start putting symbols into it. Um, I'm kind of using it as a way to tell a story in a narrative way, but without words. Um, and, and so I put my own personal symbols in, or I try to use symbols that have been used in, in art in the past um, to sort of give you an idea of what the story is about. Um, and it's definitely like to some degree a way to sort of analyze and reflect on my own life, my upbringing, my beliefs. Um, I also like to use a lot of humor and cynicism in my work, um, just like I do in real life. <laughs> so you might find a piece looks sort of like, yeah, innocent and nostalgic. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite approachable, but then as you look at it longer, you start to see that it's maybe a little bit more unsettling and a little more disturbing the longer you look at it. Yeah, can you, can you actually um, sort of describe maybe one piece um, in particular so that, and, and give me an example of like what makes it playful, but then what also makes it a little bit um, 
sort of looking at the darker side of human nature or um, circumstances or whatever, because I, I, you know, I know what you're talking about, but if you can yeah. explain it to our audience, that'd be awesome. One of the pieces that I've done um, is called Inquisitive Bears. Um, you see two bears and they're each holding a head in their hands. And they're actually supposed to sort of represent masks. Like they're trying on different um, belief systems or personalities or just anything that they're sort of experimenting with. Um, there's a book of eggs in the background and I tend to use eggs as a reoccurring theme in my work for all sorts of reasons. Um, uh, because there's a lot of idioms around eggs, like egg on your face, like if you're embarrassed. Um, but in this piece too, there's other images, like there's a piggy bank, like as if you're saving up for your future. And um, there's a fire in the background or maybe a lack of a fire. So in this image, you've got a fireplace, you've got candles lit. Um, sometimes that means like I'm, I'm toying with ideas of heaven and hell. So if the candles are lit, maybe that means um, they're being, like the bears are being naughty. And actually I have a Mennonite background, so I use Mennonite uh, imagery. So there's, in this piece, there's like a cake, there's uh, Pasca, there's Easter eggs, there's all sorts of things. One of my yeah. favorite ones of yours is um, the one you did for a show called The 100 Migos. I think it's a deer and a bear. Yeah, a deer um, and And a, they're sitting at a fire roasting yeah. marshmallow, marshmallows, but the fire isn't lit and there's like a yeah. burnt forest behind them. So there's yeah. kind of like this um, contrast between this really sweet, lovely, like two little characters, but also just this kind of circumstance that's almost kind of apocalyptic. And yeah. I think... I think that's what's just so seductive about your work. How did you, or tell me about the moment you decided to become an artist. Oh, <laughs> well, um, it's, it's hard to say that there was a moment. So yeah. basically I've been creating art for as long as I remember. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always drawing animals and people, faces, basically. Um, when I graduated high school, I was pretty lost. I didn't really know what to do. And I don't think I really took um, myself as an artist seriously. I also did other things like, like I drew and I wrote songs and whatever. And um, when I went to university, I ended up studying psychology, thinking that I needed to help people, which would be good. Um, I thought, so I, so I uh, majored in psychology and minored in visual arts, and I was thinking I'd combine the, the two to become an art therapist. And as time passed, I um, realized that wasn't really the path I wanted. So I did work for about five or six years um, with adults and children with developmental disabilities. And after... Um, after five or six years, I realized I wasn't giving myself any time to work on my art and that I was, I, I was depressed about it. Um, I just felt like I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. So I quit one of my main jobs and sat at home for a year and just painted and painted and painted until I found sort of who I was as an artist and what I wanted to say. And, um, and by the end of that first year, I booked my first solo show. So in the meantime, I was doing like group shows um, just to get my art out there. But by the end of that year, I had a solo show and that's kind of when I started to be an artist. <laughs> Information, it's when you see your art through other people's eyes and when they start talking to you. Actually, I'd say there was a pivotal moment where uh, Chris Benson from Hot Artwood City, when he didn't quite have his uh, gallery, he didn't have a permanent gallery space yet. So this is a, a gallery I showed at quite a bit was Hot Artwood City, um, but he did an interview with me. And it was um, while I still had my, my regular job, he did an interview and he was asking me all these very important and serious questions. And I felt like an imposter because I wasn't taking myself as seriously as he was. He was treating me like an artist and I wasn't. Hmm. Does that cool. make sense? Yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> so Andrea, what's the most challenging project that you've worked on so far? Um, there's one in sort of recent years that comes to mind. Um, Basically, I was asked to join a collective as a guest artist, and a lot of the, the artists in the collective, the work that they do is amazing. And um, What's the and collective I, called? Uh, Phantoms in the Front Yard. Okay. Yeah, the original show was uh, the final show at Hot Artwood City, and it was called Bad People, Portraits of the Punishable. Yeah. But yeah, those are the ones they're that amazing. That. They're amazing. Thank you. Well, and that's what I was going to say. So the most, the biggest challenge actually, what came out of it was this crazy new style that I hadn't tried before that I've gotten so, so many compliments on and that I really am excited to continue working in that style. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a huge benefit to me. To challenge cool. Myself so it was good to push yourself a little bit. Oh, totally. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. get outside your comfort zone. So if you could tell your younger high school self something mm -hmm. um, to kind of ease their is there um, anxiety or stress or, um, you know, just something that you wish you could go back and tell yourself, what, what would it be? 
really just don't quit and don't downplay it. For me, I didn't really see it. I think I mentioned this before. I didn't really see it as like a career path or um, I also didn't put a lot of myself into it. Like I, I guess I just, um, I treated it more like a technical skill and I was sort of scared to use it as a way to say anything. So um, like I wrote my little songs and poems and hid them in books. But when I did, when I created artwork, it was just, it was more technical. So when I learned how to really put myself into my work is when I became more proud to show it. And I think it's just, um, put it, like apply for group shows, like don't stop making your art and don't, don't tell yourself you have to do something else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really it. good Keep advice. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think that having this, the skills you do is so important, but also I really like the idea that you have to put yourself into the work. Yes. You have to sort of lay something on the line. I was wondering, would you give us a drawing prompt kind of based on your style yeah. that will push them out of their particular comfort zone and um, maybe get them to think in a way like you do? Yeah. Well, I'm going to challenge you <laughs> to um, try making, try doing a line drawing. You could color it in afterwards if you'd like, but of an animal um, wearing clothing, an anthropomorphic animal drawing. Um, basically, you could go about it two ways. You could find an animal and you could think of like what personality that animal might have if they were a person. Or you could think of a person you know and think of what kind of animal they would be. But um, yeah, just the more, the more detail you put into it and the more sort of like little hidden jokes you can put into it, the more fun it becomes. So for instance, uh, I drew a sloth that I turned into a magnet. And um, the like when you think of a sloth, they're kind of like slow and chill. So I thought, oh, that sloth would probably be like a yoga instructor. So I called it the Nama sloth. And I, make it, I made its little paws go together, like it was saying namaste. And it has this kind of dreamy smile on it. Um, but yeah, like, so think of like the details in the clothing. Think about the hair. Um, yeah. You could even do like the under drawing with pencil and then go over it with uh, a pen afterwards. That's what I usually do. And if you mm -hmm. want to take it further, you could shade it a little bit. Um, you could also use, if you have watercolor, um, add that on at the end. Yeah, color love it. Yeah. Okay, so Andrea, thank you so much for doing this interview. Yeah, You're an no amazing problem. artist. Um, I find you really inspiring. And um, I'm just wondering if you could tell everybody where we can find you. Oh, where yeah. Are the best places um, to find you in Vancouver or online? So online, I have a couple of websites. I have um, www.andreahoge.com, and my last name is spelled H-O-O-G-E. Um, my other website where you can find more of the magnets and clothing um, is www.thedollyshop.com, and I'm on Instagram under both of those names as well. Okay. Um, that's cool and I'll also put this in the show notes for the video and um, I definitely have to go check out Andrea's stuff she's an amazing artist and she's um, all over Vancouver and online thank you. thanks so much bye